that uh, saying that Gandhi said, first they ignore you. You say that you would eliminate the IRS, the CIA. Then they laugh at you. The Federal Reserve. <laughs> Ron Paul is a no one. Ron Paul really has no business being on stage. Hughes would do this, you know, the phone texting, Sean Hannity, text us right now, whatever the digits were for your candidate, you know. And each Fox News poll, this was a poll conducted by Fox News, Ron Paul overwhelmingly won. Here's a look at the uh, early results of our text message poll. First place, Ron Paul, surprisingly. Okay. What does it say that he's doing so well in our text messaging well, among those I, watching Fox News? To be honest, right says absolutely nothing. Maybe he's a little bit better organized than having his organizers do, do the necessary dialing. Well, that's just those crazy Ron Paul people texting over and over. Now, we all know you text one time. Thank you for your vote. Fox News appreciates, you know, watch Fox News. You text again, sorry, you can only vote one time. On the one hand, you're taking it seriously enough to, to put it on, and then on the other hand, you're saying, no, don't pay attention to the person who's in first place. Look, look, text look, polls are text polls. Right. It's like internet it's polls. It's not even phone calls. He did it's not, not even phone call, right? He did not win no, that no, debate. Please. He did not win it. No, no. Why would he try to discredit their own poll? It doesn't make any sense. In second place, Governor, you're in second place with uh, 27%. Third place. Maybe. If Romney had won, you would have seen ticker tape parade stuff happen in the studio. You know, they would have brought out, you know, horses and Clydesdales and chariots. Congress, Congressman Paul, uh, yet another question about electability. Do you have any, sir? There's always the question as to whether or not <laughs> you are, in fact, viable. Your differences with the Republican... Then they fight you. You, you have proof of that. There's, There's no proof. proof. There's absolutely proof. No, but it, it is. A a and then you win. So you're suggesting that I'm not electable and the Republicans don't want me because I'm a strict fiscal conservative? Because I believe in civil liberties? Why should we not be, be defending civil liberties? And why should we not be talking about foreign policy that used to be the part of the Republican Party? I, let me see if I get this right. We, we need to borrow $10 billion from China and then we give it to Musharraf, who's a military dictator who overthrew an elected government, and then we go to war, we lose all these lives promoting democracy in Iran. I mean, what's going on here? There's never been a more conservative person to run for president of the United States than Ron Paul, and he's an embarrassment to them because they're a liberal, piece of trash, neoconservative party cares about war and war alone. For Ron Paul's campaign, I think that's when a lot of people woke up. There's no question that, that Ron Paul struck a chord and it resonated with many people. The Ron Paul moment, and that's exactly what that was. And it was after that moment, after, after May, that, that traffic all over online really started to explode. When Giuliani gave us a boost, uh, then I realized that there's a lot of support out there. <laughs> He's got like five people. Blew away every other candidate by a mile. 4,000, 5,000, something like that, um, groups around the world. And not just in America, I mean around the world. They were in Belgium and, and Australia and, and just, they were everywhere. Places, it's like, can you attach it? If you can attach it, it went up. People up there, all the meetup groups, we were all concentrated. There wasn't anywhere you could go that somebody didn't have a Ron Paul sign up. We're about to go where no man has gone before. We don't do it because it's easy. We do it because it's high. <laughs> one small step for man, one giant leap for Ron Paul. <laughs> Dr. Paul himself were blown away by the grassroots response. I don't want to use the word out of control. <laughs> it was unbelievable from then on. The kids would hear about the campaign on the internet and look at the videos and get their parents involved. We have allowed our nation to be overtaxed and overregulated and overrun by bureaucrats. The founders would be ashamed of us for what we're putting up with. Hunt followers outnumbered and out rallied all the other candidates' people combined. It was just, it blew me away, you know, so I knew I was in the right camp. <laughs> and we had fun, because if you're not having fun, 
You're so doing it wrong. <laughs> Purpose gives one strength and courage. I pedaled 3,700 miles from the Santa Monica Pier in California in the Los Angeles to the Jefferson Memorial in Washington, D.C. It was the idea that we can make a difference in this country, and that's more important than any personal hardship I might go through. People are going to be sorry. They're going to look back and say, oh, maybe I could have done more. They ain't going to cut it in this day and age. We need to, to do more. But there's another thing that I think we ought to do. We ought to make a grand display. We ought to have a true march to show what our numbers are. Well, Dr. Paul, all he had to do was say, hey, I think there should be a revolution march. Boom. theory has always been that if you ever can bring about revolutionary changes, two things would be required. The young people would have to be involved, and you'd have to have music. Five hundred degrees. It was unbelievably muggy and hot and miserable. But these people showed up, and the D.C. police told us that at the height of the march, there had to be fifteen thousand people there. The and the good old boys. As Iraq veterans against the war, we are resisting an occupation we once risked our lives for. We swore to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, but we found out the hard way that the greatest enemies of the Constitution are not to be found in the sands of some far off land, but rather right here at home. We didn't have anything go wrong, and no fights, no problems. Everything just went wonderful. No more central planners, no more bailouts, some billions for the bankers. We're surrounded by the John McCain's, the Bob Dole's, Hillary Clinton's, Barack Obama's, Chuck Schumer's, all these interchangeable nobodies and liars and thieves and killers. Even though people were upset about the government, upset about some of the things that are happening, it was so happy. Yeah.